hello everyone uh, thanks for being here i thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to uh, present um, a, a tutorial session uh, in the indo french meeting here today so uh, let's get into because this is going to be a long session so let's get in uh, to the uh, low resolution spectroscopic data reduction directly so um, i have uh, i know here a uh, few of you are from uh, not the optical background but from radio background also so what i am trying to do here is uh, just to give you a brief of uh, how uh, an optical spectra would look like and uh, how we are going to use a very raw data which is coming from the telescope instrument to uh, reduce uh, how to use it and reduce it and get some meaningful results out of it so um My name is Ramya Sethuram. I am a project scientist at India TMT Center here at uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, and uh, I leave my email um, so you can contact me any time uh, regarding these uh, uh, spectroscopic data reduction if you have any doubts. So in this session today, uh, we will be using IRAF and DS9. Uh, IRAF is Image Reduction and Analysis Facility. It is a thirty thirty five year old. Uh, uh application software uh, first created by NOAO which is now Neuer Labs and uh, um uh, SAO DS9 is a tool for viewing your fits images so these two are uh, the application software which we are going to use so if you have not uh, if you are unable to install it i uh, request you to just go to our support in the ground floor down down there it support where you can install iraf and they will help you install iraf and ds9 uh, so it takes only 10 minutes apart from that for the people who are online joining us uh, on zoom uh, so i have given all the instructions on how to download it in the tutorial material which you can download from the uh, uh, indo french meeting website itself so you can download it um, unzip it untar it and you will have a study material folder where uh, you have instructions on how to download uh, iraf as well so let's get in so uh, this is going to be very basic so uh, forgive me for that if it's too basic for you but uh, uh, so we are dealing with uh, spectroscopy so what do i mean by uh, spectroscopy we are trying to get uh, um, basically understand the flux uh, with respect to each wavelength so here what you see on the left side is an image of a galaxy now as the uh, what uh, people have done is put an as put a fiber at the center of the galaxy the white circle over there is when you take the light from the center of the galaxy and uh, pass the light through a set of uh, uh, optical instruments uh, such as uh, your uh, uh, grating disperser collimator and your camera and uh, you will see on the right edge is what you get as your uh, um, uh, spectrum so spectrum you can see on the y axis is flux and on the x axis is wavelength so we are at the end of the tutorial session i'll try to help you to uh, uh, derive this spectrum so uh, this is one way of getting a spectroscopic uh, data that is you put a fiber with uh, onto your target and uh, get a single um, Uh, uh, si single fiber spectrum and this this could uh, look something like this now there is another way which is a very old fashioned way um, but very useful way that is the long slit spectroscopy long slit spectroscopy is you put a long slit um, across uh, your object and uh, the spectra you get for example is is position versus wavelength if you look at it around a particular emission line uh you will get some uh, spatial information as well over here and you can uh, extract along each of these columns or each of uh, these rows and you can see how your uh, velocity profiles of your particular um, uh, line emission can change so this is uh, another way of uh, doing um, uh, getting uh, spatial information instead of getting only one single fiber data now Uh, uh we have ifu data this is uh, this is the data you get in all three dimensions that is for every uh, pixel on the uh, image over here if this is your uh, size of um your size of the uh, 
um, a detector which which is able to image this or get the spectra of this. So um, you have you can get spectra at each point in the x y direction. So you have uh, three dimensions: your x, y, and uh, you have the third dimension as your uh, wavelength axis. So this this you can see. Um, the radio people have been doing this uh, since a long time, and uh, IFU data is catching up uh, from the past uh, two decades uh, with the optical uh, spectroscopy, optical uh, wavelength range. So this is how you get a lot of uh, data in the IFU. So today, what we are going to do, uh, that's about a very short note on uh, spectroscopy. So some of the some of the study material, has, I have uh, put it in the tutorial, so you can take a look at it and read through more material on how spectroscopy is. Um, so today, what we are going to do is um, reduce a two meter telescope uh, data. It's a HFOSC data. FOSC is faint object spectrograph camera, which can uh, take both, uh, uh, which can do both photometry and spectroscopy. FOSC is a very uh, standard instrument now on many telescopes. So if you learn this uh, uh, data reduction technique, you, any of the FOSC data, what you get from any of any other telescope, you can uh, reduce. You can just get the data and reduce it. So, um, so uh, let me just give you the uh, telescope parameters or the instrument parameters over here. What we have here is uh, what the data set will have is a long slit spectra of an extended object. It will also have a standard star and corresponding uh, lamp spectra, FE, uh, that is a arc lamp spectrum for wavelength calibration. So we, we have taken here iron neon uh, lamp spectrum. So that is what will be there in the data set folder in the tutorial, uh, uh, in the tutorial material there. So this, um, this uh, extended object has been observed through a slit. It's a long slit. The width of the slit is 1.92 arc seconds. Uh, the standard star, because we are doing, we are going to use the standard star for flux calibration. We'll come to it, what it all means. Uh, so we want most of the flux from the standard star to uh, go through the slit. So for the standard star observations, what we have done is we have used the largest slit width available. And that's 15.4 uh, arc seconds uh, from the two meter Himalayan Chandra telescope. So you can uh, get details about the two meter Himalayan Chandra telescope, which is one of the workhorse uh, telescope for Indian Institute of Astrophysics and for the whole in, uh, India right now. Um, uh, so, it, so we are going to use this data. Continuing with the, uh, with the data, we have calibration lamp. As I told you, it's iron neon lamp for calibrating uh, the, uh, the X axis. And uh, we have observed that using the 0.77 arc second slit width. So, uh, so these were the informations on the slits. So what is the kind of uh, uh, grating we have used? It's a grism. It's a combination of uh, prism and grating. And this is uh, the wavelength range is 5,800 to 8,350 angstroms. And the resolution is about 2,200. So uh, the CCD is a uh, site silicon tellurium uh, CCD. It's 2K by 4K CCD, but we are going to use a bint data, which is having only uh, 250 pixels on X axis and uh, 4,196 on the Y axis, which means that dispersion axis is full, while the X axis, when we are not using much of the uh, X axis, so we are binning that part of the data to improve the signal to noise. So uh, the uh, gain is 1.22 uh, and readout noise is 4.87 electrons. And we are going to use IRAF and DS9 for data reduction. So uh, uh, diving more into how the data is, actually, uh, we will have to first, before getting into uh, data reduction, we'll have to um, correct for the CCD characteristics. One of the CCD characteristics is a bias count or uh, some positive voltage, which is given to the CCD so that the readout is always positive when there is no counts also. So, uh, so that is this, uh, this section over here shows how a bias image would look. So this bias image is taken when the CCD shutter is closed. 
you need to uh, you need to close the cc shutter take a zero second exposure and that's what you call it as a bias so there if you see if you if you're not allowing your exposing your ccd to the sky you should always get a zero counts but instead you can see that there are some counts uh, which which is being shown and that is the bias counts it's a constant count as you can see not much variation it's between 380 and 390 and uh, so uh, this is to check your uh, ccd is not uh, taking any more um uh, yeah uh, it's not going bad over the night it's being cooled and constantly cool all through the night this is one way of checking the other ways are dark frames which we are not going to take for optical uh, or we have not taken for this particular data set uh, so i'm not going to go to the detail of dark you can understand it more from the reading material uh, so this bias is uh, one uh, CCD characteristics which we have to remove from our data. So the second on the right side here, um, I hope you are able to read the counts uh, from the image there uh, on the screen. And so what you see here on the uh, uh, right side is a, a flat lamp. It's a halogen lamp. Uh, we observe this uh, so that we'll correct the pixel to pixel variation on the CCD, from the ccd or the ccd pixels will have will be having a different sensitivity each pixel will not be counting the same number of photons so that is the ccd effect and you have to remove it so for that we will observe we will observe a constant uh, we will observe a flat frame which is having a constant count falling on it so you can get more details from the material so um, this uh, flat uh, lamp will be used for pixel to pixel variation or pixel to pixel correction of the ccds so uh, this is how the profile of a, a flat lamp will look uh, on the right side what you are seeing here so this we will use as you uh, yeah as you can see there are minor uh, pixel to pixel variations and and this needs to be corrected coming to uh, how would a uh, how would a um, source look look how or what will the spectra look like? So what you see here in the middle section is how the spectrum of a 2D spectrum of a source will look like. So what you see here, if you take a line cut, if you take a cut along the x-axis, so this is what you see. You see uh, enhan enhancement in intensity in one or in few of the columns. And then after, the, again, it goes back to uh, the bias level. And then again, you see an increase in intensity. So which means to say it is showing uh, there are that uh, two uh, objects in the slit that we have observed. So as you can see, this is um, the x-axis and this is the dispersion axis. So this is the spatial axis and this is the uh, spectral direction. So uh, if I just center it onto this particular uh, image and if I take a column cut, how will the spectra look? So this is how the spectra will look like along the column. Uh, this is uh, one of the standard star, which we are going to use for flux calibration. So what you have here, if you look at this uh, spectra carefully, um, what you have here is uh, pixel values or counts on the y-axis against um, uh, pixel, pixel numbers. So uh, if we have to have a calibrated spectrum, which means to say that we are going to convert the x-axis, which is in pixels, to wavelength, and the y-axis, which is in counts, to flux in Earth's per centimeter square per second per angstrom. So uh, that will, we will use IRAF to do that. So this is a, a section of the spectrum of an extended source. So this is how you will look, it will look. So coming to a little bit more detail, uh, this is the continuum. What you can see, that band is the continuum of, of whatever the extended source. You see here two patches or multiple patches here. Bright, those are emission lines. Emission lines, when I say these are uh, some of the emission lines here, as you can see. And these lines, which are uh, going across the whole spatial uh, direction, is created by the sky. So these are sky emission lines. So as you can see here, there are a lot of these emission lines that's all created from the uh, sky. So our aim is to, uh, is to extract this spectrum 
improve its signal to noise because as you can see it is spread over not a single column but it is spread over a few uh, sections of columns so we will uh, what we'll do is we'll try to add all those into into uh, one on top of the other we'll place them one on top of the other uh, and we will uh, trace the spectrum why do we need tracing as you can see um, you can see very clearly here that the spectrum is not along one column but it is having some kind of a tilt so we need to correct for this tilt when we are extracting the spectrum so tracing will correct the tilt uh, we will improve the signal to noise by adding se several different columns and we will do a background subtraction as you can see all these emission lines is from skylines this doesn't belong to the object itself it's because of the uh, atmosphere atmospheric lines and this needs to be subtracted out completely so so as you can see i've mentioned here these are sky emission lines atmospheric lines uh, this is the source continuum over here and you can see uh, emission emission lines from from the source itself so if it's a source spectrum it's only restricted to the source but if it's from the sky it covers the whole uh, spatial direction that's how you can differentiate between the two so uh, is it okay till here you have any doubts we'll get into iraf now okay yeah let's let's uh, get in so um so as i mentioned to you these are different kinds of uh, uh, data sets which i have given you there are uh, uh, bias which needs to be subtracted out uh, then there is flat field um, we need to normalize the object with respect to this flat field for pixel to pixel correction and um, we need to convert the x axis to wavelength and the y axis to flux proper flux counts so we'll uh, we'll begin that by doing a bias subtraction and trimming so what it means is you have to take your object frames and uh, estimate the bias okay and subtract it out from your object from it could be from your uh, uh, calibration lens it could be your standard star it could be your extended object whatever it is it needs to be subtracted out so there are two weather uh, two methods which people use to uh, to do uh by subtraction one is frame to frame sub subtraction and the second is constant count subtraction as i told you uh, as i showed you in the spectrum bias has a very constant count it wouldn't vary over the night that you will check by taking multiple bias frames during your observations so you will have uh, a constant count of say between uh, 380 and 390 with a uh, with a sigma or a de standard deviation of about 10 counts 10 to 15 counts so uh, so that is constant all through the night so you can just take that median count and subtract it out from your uh, uh, fr from your object frames so that will be a constant count subtraction method so why do we do this method um, or let me first do a frame to frame subtraction so in the frame to frame subtraction what you do is you take the whole bias frame and your object frame and simply subtract it out so but we don't use this frame to frame subtraction at least uh, with some of the data which we get from a few telescopes because we see that there are uh, bias bias has some patterns it could be because of some um, some i i don't know or, uh, there are some patterns in the bias which we don't want it to get it to the object frames so instead of uh, get it, uh, putting more artifacts into the ob uh, into the object it is better to use a constant count subtraction so uh, some of the reasons could be some uh, pick up ac pick up uh, which will create artifacts on the bias frame so uh, for that hence for that we just use a constant count subtraction so once we do a constant count subtraction we are having a bias corrected frame and we will be uh, doing a trimming of the edges um, so the trim sections here is given something like this we will use the whole of x axis but on the y axis we will cut out uh, where the spectrum is not not there so that we have estimated it's between 50 and 3200 is the most uh, this is the pixel pixel numbers right so uh, between the 50 and 3200 is the most usable data in the hct that you can check by checking the images so uh, beyond that we are just uh, removing it off so that is the trim section we are going to use 
So what is the task we are going to use? We are going to use the uh, in-merit task and uh, in-copy uh, task. So uh, let us get into the IRAC. Uh, who would like to try with me who has IRAC and uh, a DS9 and download the data so that I can go a little slow? If not, I can go a little bit fast so that you can download it and work on it later and get back to me. Okay. You can put two people together, the one who has installed it and the one who doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, you can separate out in a way that uh, three to four people can bunch up and work on it together. And you have installed it already. So maybe you want the other three people who haven't installed it. Yeah, can you spread out and, uh, and join together? So who has experience with IRAF? I, I have used it earlier and it was OK, but uh, you know how to start it and all. Yeah. Who has, no, uh, who has absolutely no uh, uh, experience with IRAF? OK. Do you want to uh, shift with people like uh, Poyal? Do you want to help her? So while people are still settling down, if you have any doubts, let me know. Yeah, so uh, when you are subtracting the bias, you said that you are subtracting some constant count. Yeah. So you just give a number. Right? No, we'll see that. How we are going to estimate the constant count, we'll see that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, but when you have that count, it just uh, like gives like above this count subtract some. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a blind subtraction. Yes. yes. So we'll start. Um, So we'll use a terminal window, which is called the XG term. You, I, I'm pretty sure most of you uh, know this. So we'll work on this terminal window. So there are three windows which we'll be constantly using. Uh, this will also show us the graphical user interface. Uh, yeah. So, and the other one is uh, DS9. I'm pretty sure the first thing you learn in astronomy is DS9. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you when you have to uh, start IRAF, you have to use this command CL and press enter. So which means it has initialized the, the IRAF package. Yeah, I'm trying. Oh, control the control plus should work, no? Yeah. 
So anyone knows how to increase the font size here? You cannot see, right? You can change the item file actually. There is some option. Then you can change the font format. Or you can open like minus SP. Minus item. Yeah, XG term. Minus? Minus SP. SB? Okay. Good, thank you. Is this okay? So, um, so, so there are some of the packages which you need to initialize. A uh, few of the packages are CCD red, IM red, and uh, spec red. So once you call them, they, they, these uh, packages are initialized and these tasks will be available for you to uh, edit. So uh, let's navigate uh, to the respective dataset directory. So if you if you download the data, um, if you download the tutorial, you will have the data in uh, G8 underscore data. So you can go to that particular directory and you have all the uh, files required for our uh, extraction today. So I have also uh, given a list of whatever the objects which are there here. So if you, you can see, so uh, each file corresponds to a different uh, uh, data. So we have two bias frames. One is uh, frame number 41 and frame number 54. So we will just start with the bias subtraction. To understand what is the co constant count that you need to subtract, you need to use the statistics. You need to understand the statistics of the bias frame. So let me first display how the bias frame would look like. Okay, this is how the bias frame uh, looks like. So display space and the file name will will show will display it on the ds9 and imexam is the command to examine the uh, image so if you press imexam go to the ds9 where your image is open and uh, try to take a column cut and and you will have a graphical uh, interface which is open and this is how the bias frame will look like uh, over a single particular column so columns 118 to 118, the bias would look something like this. So uh, it's it's about uh, 385 that it is having a constant count with some uh, standard deviation. So to understand uh, completely, what is the first look? Huh, okay. Oh, yeah. I lost you. Uh, okay. Okay. So, could you see the data set here? Uh, Grism 8 data. Where are you stuck? Yeah. Yeah. It's better you come in front. <laughs> So if you have the data set folder, I am just displaying uh, uh, one image. Yeah, I'm displaying the 41st image. And this is a bias frame. 
I know what what each frame corresponds to uh, because we can get this file. I'll I'll show you how to get the data file. Okay, you would have observed, or somebody would have observed for you, and they would have just given you a set of pitch files. So you should know what is there in the observations. So you can pick out the headers which are more important for you and place it into a text file and know what is the uh, observation log basically. This this is the observation log. I'll let you know how to create this. So, uh, have you downloaded dataset file? Inside dataset, there is a folder called spec, and inside spec, there is a Grism8 data folder. G8, sorry, G8 data. Huh? So, if you get into that, yeah, you can open your image dot list that will open a file of this kind. It's a text file. Yeah, now I'm just displaying another bias for you. The bias frame is OH040054. Abhinaya, you had some doubt? XG term? CL? CL. CL in the XG term. Enter it. Help. You can help him. Who could display? Who could display? Or let me know if you are having troubles. Who is having troubles? I have displayed 54. It's a bias print. Why don't you go down? And she did install it on them only. Have you done MK IDA? Terminal. Okay. 
So if you are having troubles uh, in the installed IDA, you can go down and get our IT support and get it rectified. Okay, it could be some permissions problem that he has installed in root or something sort of. So just, uh, just get it sorted out. Okay, shall we continue? So, if you have displayed the bias frame, bias frame would look something like this. We'll use the inexam command to examine the uh, bias frame. And the bias frame will have a constant count, as I mentioned to you, somewhere between 380 and 390. It's almost constant. On the DS9, uh, in the in the image, what is the list? Column cut C. C. It's a column cut. <laughs> uh, in the DS9 image, this is not reduced. This is very raw data. So on the uh, yeah on the x-axis is you have counts. Okay. So what are the photons you get? It falls on the, onto the CCD, gets converted into uh, electrons, which will be read out and then um, digitized to uh, ADC counts. Okay, those are the counts. So it's a proportional to the number of photons falling onto your detector. It's proportional intensity. Intensity. On the x-axis is uh, the pixel numbers. So this, this image, what you are seeing here, So this image, actually, this is the total size of the CCD. Okay, it is uh, 2K by actually 4K. It's 2,000 uh, 2, pixels by 4,000 pixels. So what what we are using is we are interested in only a small region. So we have uh, reduced the x-axis because the reading out uh, uh, will include more of uh, problems. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have reduced and binned the CCD. So when, when it's reading out, instead of reading each pixel, it will combine two pixels and, and then read out. So it's binned to some level. So we'll increase the noise and uh, we'll increase the signal in the x direction by adding the path. And in the y direction, because it's the dispersion direction, wavelength, we don't want to fold it along the wavelength. So we keep the whole uh, CCD. So uh, what it is plotting here, when I say column cut, it is plotting on a particular column. The column number is 120, right? How is the intensity varying from, uh, say, 0 to uh, the end of the column? So 4196 four, is the pixel. 4096. So this column um, this column will be a, a column of pixels. So 4096 is the number of pixels in the one direction. Yeah. Okay. So, so this will be like uh, 2K by 4K CCD. Yeah. But we are using only the 250 pixels in the X direction and uh, total in the Y direction. Yeah. Okay. Clear, okay? So uh, we saw uh, how the bias frame would look like. So uh, we'll just take a look at other frames also. So for example, I will show you how the uh, image frame would look like for a galaxy or for a uh, standard star. So I had uh, showed you in the PPT, this is uh, uh, two stars in the same slit. So that's why you are getting two stars here. So if you uh, come to the center and press, uh, take a column cut, that is press C on the, on, the, uh, on the spectrum. So you can see that the spectrum looks something like this. Okay. This is just we are uh, viewing on the raw image. Okay. We have to reduce this image. Okay. This is uh, image number 43. That's a star. 
that's a standard calibrator so let me display to you how a, a calibration lamp would look like so what you see here is a lamp arc lamp spectrum what you see here is lines okay um, of uh, wave, different wavelengths so if i take a column cut for this also you will see it looks something like this so you understand this so it is pixels versus counts you got it sorted great great So we have two bias frames, as you can see, 41 and 54, right? We will try to see what is the total statistics of the bias frame. So imstat is the command to understand the statistics of the whole frame, okay? So imstat, and I give space, file name, press enter. So this is what it gives me. So what is the image name? This is the image name. Total number of pixels it has taken for sta uh, statistics is 250 by 4096, something like this. And what is the mean of all the pixels is about 382. And what is the standard deviation? It's 26. That's the deviation, what you see here between uh, the minimum and maximum. Hmm? I'm taking the statistics on the bias image. 41, 41 and 54. Now I'm taking the statistics of 54th frame. So this mean, it's in the terms of counts. Counts, counts. This size counts. Okay. So you take an average. So basically, when you are observing whole through the night, you have to take a, a generally biases all through the night in a, in a one hour gap. Then uh, try to see whether there was variations in this mean count. You try to see whether it had any structures in the bias frames so that you cannot do anything if there are structures in the bias frames. But uh, you can at least uh, think that your constant count subtraction is better than the frame to frame subtraction. So, uh, the, so you take an average of these two frames. So when you have 10 biases in a night, you take an average or a median of the all the 10 frames and you subtract it out from all your objects. So here, yeah, we are taking an average of the two biases and subtracting out with all uh, with respect to all the frames. So, um, uh, generally, we used to take one uh, one bias per hour. Okay, per hour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Because it wouldn't take much of your time. It's a zero second exposure, so you can take it. Okay. And it also is showing the characteristics of your CCD that it is cool and the cooling remains all through the night. So there is no dark current. So we have to do the bias subtraction now. So, yeah. Uh, from the you can also use the statistics by pressing some key. It's a number. A or B. Actually, it's not working. Why it's not working? You have to start the uh, IMRED yeah, CCD red and IMRED CCD red spectra. Yeah, why instead is not working? What is say? What does it say? Showing error reading image. Okay, it's the problem with the image. The number, the name, file name, and all is correct. Display. Like mm -hmm. five displaying and five images of every two this in instead of one. From the yes, so you can do an image exam yeah. and display the image. Yeah. Um, uh, you can use M key. M? M key. Try out M key. 
but that will give you statistics at a very small location it's not the statistics of the whole frame so at each location you should get the statistics of the entire frame that would be better or at the same time like in different yeah you can do that but still it's not the entire frame yeah it's okay it's okay for now it's okay so we'll get it to by a subtraction so as i told you i'm going to try out a just a constant count subtraction so this is the average i think between the two uh, frames so um, so this is the command imarith is image arithmetic you give the input file name uh, space the operation what you want to do and space the constant count number and the new file name with a space that is uh, uh, after a space that is so i i just give a proper name so that i understand what these files are so i precede it with the uh, letter b which means it's a bias subtractor frame okay and so you can try out um, for all the frames here you should do a bias subtraction for all the frames here so right now i am doing a bias subtraction only on four frames but you have to do a bias subtraction for all your observed uh, uh, frames okay uh, so uh, that is what is the kind of signal to noise you want in your spectrum so uh, generally it depends on the signs you want to uh, do if if you are only interested in the emission lines not on the uh, continuum or absorption lines so uh, people think that the signal to noise of the emission line signal to noise in the emission line should be greater than 5 when you estimate with respect to the continuum if it, if the signal to noise the flux is greater than 5 uh, then that is good enough uh, detection of an emission line uh, but if you want to do very serious measurements of metallicity uh, then you will have to have the continuum fit well so for which we would require signal to noise of anywhere between 30 and 50 for a low resolution spectrum if you want to do even more uh, strict analysis with the absorption lines as well fitting the absorption lines so 50 would be an ideal uh, number mm -hmm. so uh, you will have to observe the target um, it, until you have uh, until you reach a signal to noise ratio of 50 yeah. so then you can make uh, uh, you you can you can calculate there are as uh, exposure time estimators Uh, so how much exposure time is required to achieve a signal to noise of 50 on a particular uh, telescope of a particular aperture and with the uh, instrument throughput sensitivity everything so you can estimate that uh, uh, exposure time using that you can propose for your uh, science observations you can expose your data until that time so it's also that i didn't uh, um, mention to you that there could be a lot of uh, cosmic hits if you continue to expose your ccd because these are in uh, yeah cosmic rays are everywhere so if you expose your ccd uh, uh, for too long 
then there could be chances of uh, 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 these cosmic hits, what I'm showing you here, uh, coming and sitting on your spectrum. And it may spoil or uh, it may it may create the problems for your emission line estimations or your continuum estimations. So it is better to take multiple exposures of 15 minutes and then you stack up, you add up all your. Uh, so that is what we have done here. For example, for an extended source, which is given here, we have taken multiple exposures of 20 minutes or 15 minutes each. You read out, you read out your data, you flush the CCD, you do a clearing of the CCD, start approach. What happened? Like this three equation. Who could do by subtraction? Now you can do your instead of personal registration. Anybody facing problem? So we are through with the, the bias, uh, bias subtraction. We have done the bias uh, correction. Is that right? Continue your bias subtraction uh, for your halogen flats also. So all my uh, files which are preceded with the B letter, which means that it's a bias subtracted frame. Mm -hmm. Let's get into a uh, flat fielding. Everybody with me? You're okay. Yeah, yeah, let me know if you want from here. Emacs is not working. So Emacs is a Linux command. If you have to use a Linux command in IDAN, you have to precede it with the exclamation. Huh. Emacs is not it's not open. Okay. Uh, you can use uh, gedit. Gedit. Emacs is just a text viewer, no? You can use gedit if you don't have Emacs. Mm -hmm. 
जीएडी टॉपर so if you if you go to the data set folder uh, there is a low resolution spectroscopic manual also okay if you are stuck somewhere you can use this manual so you can you can uh, there are all the steps i think i have given all the steps here so you can go through the steps as well and do it slowly hmm? so head select is header select which you can uh, pick out some of the uh, header values and place it into a text file so that is how i created that image.lst file okay so i have given the command over here and uh, you can go through it so uh, bias correction we have done this bias correction and now we have to get into what is called as trimming we are trying to remove the edges which is yeah no 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 this is just to trim the edges this is just to trim the edges we are not going to trim the data uh, it's just the edges see when you can um yeah let me show you in this picture over here you see this uh, oh, this is called overscan region you see that a uh, very bright spike it, it, it does not belong to the data it's again the characteristics of uh, the cct so it's better to remove that off yeah and in the edges also there will be um um uh, yeah it, it is not the uh, spectral data so it's it's, it's better to remove. yeah you can check that and remove it always yes yes yeah yeah you just uh, uh, navigate it through your ds9 and okay i have trimmed the section okay so if for example if you just check the header data of i'm going to work on only uh, four or five files now 43 44 52 53 68 69 70 okay so if you compare uh, the number of uh, pixels yeah which was before trimmed and after trimming you can see that the y axis is completely uh, trimmed by about some number okay and that number is here this number so this is the im copy command so i'm not going to uh, spoil the initial data i'm just going to create a new data 
and uh, and whatever data range i require i am going to create that new data so you can do the uh, i have named it as tr which means string yeah Got it? Any doubts? Got it? Not got? What is the problem? Where are you stuck? What? Kushbu? Yeah, this is, uh, I trim the sections, no? So this is the uh, command. I don't want to cut the original data. What I'm doing is I'm going to create a new data with the required uh, uh, pixel values only. So, im copy, this is the command over here. Im copy, the file name with the section, trim section and a new file name. So this, this particular image with the particular section will be copied into a new file. So that is what I'm doing. And I've created these files, which is, uh, which are trimmed files, which I'm going to use for the next cells. You can do it in the CCD pro. That is not a problem. You can trim it in the CCD pro. Got it? No? Pile, pile group got it? Trimming? So let us finish flat building and then we'll take a, a coffee break. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. So let me show you how does a, um, a flat frame look. This is a halogen lamp frame. This is how the frame would look. Now we can take a column cut and check check its uh, spectrum, how it looks. So it looks something like this. We flat printing is nothing but the pixel to pixel variation correction. So we are going to use something called as the response function to normalize first uh, these flat frames to bring it to, as you saw, the uh, count levels were 40,000. You cannot divide your object frame by 
um, by 40,000 and lose count. So what you do is you normalize the flat frames. So you use the task called as response function. So there are two ways basically how you can uh, do this. One is we'll get into the um, yeah flat fielding. So how you do a flat field, uh, flat field correction is you use the bias corrected trimmed object frame. You divide it by your normalized flat field. Okay, so there are two ways. One, you can uh, you you can normalize your flats, each of the flats. As you saw, we have three flats there, 68, 67, 70. Normalize each of the flats, then combine using the flat combined task. You do a median combine of the uh, of the flat frames of the three flat frames to get a normalized median combined single master flat. Okay, and then you use that master flat to uh, divide from your object frame. Okay, so we use the uh, response task, okay, on each of the, um, yeah, each of the flat frames. Then we just uh, uh, combine it using the flat combine, or you can do it with the im combine also. And finally, you use the invalid task to divide your object frames by the master flat. So we'll quickly do that and then take a coffee break. So when you have to edit the parameter file of the response task, you use the command epar edit parameter. epar is edit parameter response function. So, um, so here you give your uh, object frame or uh, flat frame name. That is trboh uh, 050068.fit. Then your normalization spectrum will be the same calibration spectrum itself. That is, it's the same name. And your uh, normalized flat frame will be uh, a new new name, whatever you want to give. Flat one, N flat one, normalized flat one, something like that. Yeah, yeah, we use the, we use itself as the normalization. Yeah. So the first two names will be the same. Rest of all parameters, we are going to keep it normal. Just check whether your low rejection and high rejection is three or not. Keep it at three and three. Okay. All the other parameters are same, except low rejection, high rejection. Keep it at three. Three sigma rejection, it means. So we are going to do this uh, response or we are going to do this normalization for all the three uh, flat frames. What is this order? Uh, if you want to uh, do an interactive fitting, so how you want to fit, uh, whether you want to do an interactive fitting, then you give an S. Yes. And what is the order you want to fit to divide the response curve? I mean, to divide your flat response. So what is the kind of so fitting you want to do? Fitting Gaussian or something no, not like Gaussian. You are fitting a, you are fitting a spline function. You can also uh, fit, if this is a cubic spline fitting. You can also fit a legender and go higher orders. So, okay, let me, for your sake, uh, do an interactive fitting. For doing an interactive fitting, I have given S here, and I'll show you. Suppose that we need to open the same image on the DSI, right? No need. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, you're not going to use the DSI now. So I'm going to normalize the spectrum interactively, yes. So... This is your uh, cubic spline fitting, right? This is your cubic spline fitting on the data. This is how it looks. Some odd points you want to delete, you can delete off by pressing the, the D command. Huh. That is 
that is because there is in the beginning of the pixel first pixel there is a overscan region that is where the pixels are read out so there is some extra photons there it's better not to use that pixel when we are trimming it's better to trim that away but somehow i should have gone for a 10 to 250 the trimming section but i went to 1 to 250 so that trimming so you can you can start your uh, uh, data from here actually yes. Yeah, this is uh, the response. This is how your flat is responding. Yeah, this is with the response. Yes, yeah. So that we are taking, right? Taking care of. Yeah, yeah. Pixel to pixel variation. That is what we are trying to take care of. So you can change the order of the fitting. Okay, you can keep it either three or six or higher orders to fit this curve more accurately. Okay. Yeah, divide your object spectrum by the mass of line. So you can do either way. Uh, how will we do uh, Yeah, there are some group of people who would like to flat combine, uh, do a median combine of all the flats. And, uh, I didn't find any significant difference. Not the advantage, but I didn't find any significant difference between either of the methods. So whichever is is okay is fine. Yeah, yeah. So um, see what helps is when you have a flat which is uh, of low signal, like less than ten thousand or something, and uh, then it's better to combine the flats get a better signal to noise mm -hmm. and then do a response on the um, median combined single flat thing. That would be your mass of noise. But if you have sufficient counts in each of your uh, flat frames, so that wouldn't make that much of a difference. Either of the method is not. So when I convert, when I change the order to order six, it's fitting better. Yeah. So you can do that interactively. Okay. So uh, once we are having all the three um, normalized flats, we are going to use a flat combine keep our flat combined task to combine and make a master flat. Hmm? From, uh, okay, colon, Q will get you out of it. Colon, Q. Only Q will be Only Q will be Okay. So you got out of edit parameters. All the flats. 68, 69, 70. So you will have uh, three normalized things. Thank <laughs> you. 
when I do this and uh, colon, if I press and Q, it will get me out of that to come out. Sorry, I cannot hear you. You are finding out the, uh, you're trying to normalize your flat. So you're trying to fit a spline function, then try to nor divide by the spline function to bring it at one. It's like a normalization. Okay. You, you did the response? Say what? Colon go. Colon go will run the task. Quit it. Quit from the interactive mode. Q. Q. Okay, we are combining the flats, all the three normalized flat now. So uh, let me call it as uh, master flat, M flat of Grism 8. It's uh, going to do a median combine and it will reject cosmic rays. So rejection is CR uh, reject. Okay, rest all processes no and keep the scale as mode. Come down, give the gain as 1.22 for a particular CCD. This is the gain and this is the reroute noise. And just press colon go. Okay, so it should be, uh, it should have done. It would have created a mass of flat. Yeah. So once this flat what would I do? Keep our flat combined. Here, input, you give all your normalized flats, all the three flats. So when you're doing a median combine, it's better to have odd number of frames. Mm -hmm. And uh, the output will be whatever uh, mass of flat name you want to give. Uh, com combination will be a median combine and rejection will be like cosmic ray rejection. And then others is gain 1.22. Nothing. Empty. Yeah, empty. Rest all is mostly uh, default values. 
Yeah, yeah. That that is uh, you will get the instrument parameters. You will get it. Eight seven. Gain gain. Gain is one point two. Gain is one point two. This readout noise, sir. How do they detect this Huh. So, um, so one thing is uh, in bias or in class, it's easy because cosmic rays is, is just uh, hitting on a single pixel or at the max two or three pixels. Okay, and it's a sharp spike. It it is it is not having a profile. But if it is a, an object, a star, or any other thing, it will have its own reflection profile. Right? It will have a Gaussian profile. So this cosmic base will have uh, something very sharp uh, delta profile. So uh, and and uh, uh, yeah, you can also give a threshold value three sigma above the sky or some such thing. Uh, three sigma, five sigma, ten sigma. Then. Uh, and this spike kind of characters, it will combine and it will reject. It will check for each spike of that kind and it will reject. So spikes can also be taken as Yes, yes. So many will not be corrected. So many may remain. So we, we have to, uh, sometimes we'll have to do a very careful uh, cosmic ray rejection. But it is uh, it is not going to uh, create too much problems. Um, uh, the CR reject task will work from uh, or any of the other tasks for cosmic ray detection is, is is good. One of the tasks is also called as cosmic rays. That's also good enough. Mm -hmm. So the actual time can be only computed. Oh, there is always a bit. Uh, the bit is about one point uh, uh, two, one point five to two angstroms in the low resolution spectrum, or even more. So, um, yeah. So this could be smaller than that. No, the resolution can change. Yeah. So, in that case, the chair has a small resolution. So, in that case, if you can do the resolution, let's say that will come only at one pixel, then it will take it by the next five pixels. So, if you have a low resolution, it will be spreaded. So you will have uh, more bell curves, more larger curves with a higher sigma. Yeah. 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 The width of that pixel is that. Width of the pixel? No, no, no. That's fixed, no? For a CCD? Pixel is uh, this for one set of observations, the resolution is fixed. So that resolution is I'm not repeating the question. Yeah, we'll take it up during the coffee. Um, it's in the space between the two is about so in the space. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.
Oh, it's uh, read-out nice. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. So it's 4.87. Read-out noise is 4.87. Yeah, one minute. Okay. I I just so there was one correction. So read noise is 4.87, as Gita mentioned. Right? It's not S noise. I didn't look at it carefully. It's read noise, which is 4.87. So correct that and, and, and uh, recreate. So let us take a look at uh, the profile of uh, the master flat which we have created. So everybody could create master flat. Who created master flat? Why? Master flat? Error. Error. Okay, what is the error? No instrument translation files. So this is how the instrument flat profile looks like.
So let's take a break for a coffee and come back in ten minutes. We can take a break for a coffee. Ten minutes. We'll assemble at four forty-five again. Welcome back. So we'll continue with the session. Um, we have just uh, completed only the beginning of the session. We have to still uh, get into the spectra, spectral extraction. We have completed the flat fielding. Thank 
we didn't uh, sorry we didn't complete we have to uh, divide the object spectrum by uh, yeah yeah you're right so we'll just take uh, this uh, trimmed bias subtracted images okay we'll uh, use the image command we'll divide um, the object frame by the master flag So I'll name them uh, starting with the prefix F. Okay, you can repeat the command for all your uh, object frames and uh, your standard stars. Lab spectrum also, everything, everything. And the transition to the bias that we need to on the flat or Yes, lamps also. Flats, uh, lamps, everything. Flat. Yeah, yeah. So the flat lamps which we used was uh, was uh, 68, 69, 70, which were trimmed and bias corrected. Okay. Yeah, so you should do it on this. Okay, so let us continue. Now I have created the. Uh, uh, okay. Flat corrected, trimmed, bias subtracted uh, uh, object frames. Okay. Yeah, let us uh, display this. Okay, let's continue. So we have uh, finished the flat fielding. Now we will get into the extraction of the uh, spectrum. So from the 2D, uh, 2D image, we are going to get a single 1D uh, spectrum. That we are going to use using a task called as APAL, aperture, all aperture. APAL is aperture all, all, extract the aperture. So extraction, um, we have to do it on the object frame, standard and lamp spectra associated with the object frame and standard. So uh, what does the APAL do? It, I, as I told you, it traces the spectrum. If there is a tilt in the spectrum, mm -hmm. it traces that. It uh, does the background subtraction and it will add multiple columns to improve the uh, signal to noise. So uh, we will use that uh, command, apal task. Let us see how to use it in IRA. So the command we are going to edit parameters for are called apal. So e par apal. Then after uh, dividing with the side, what you have done? After dividing master, uh, object frame master. divided by the master, yeah. you've got these files. Yeah. Yeah. Flat corrected, trimmed by subtracted uh, object frames. Mm -hmm. So now we will use the APAL, APAL task to extract. Okay. So it's EPAR APAL. We'll use uh, the file name. Okay, you want to give a different object name, give it as object one. Okay, dot zero 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 one dot page or something like that. Or you can just give as obj1 is your output file name. Input is your uh, 43rd file, for example. 43rd file looks as something like this. If you know that this is a standard star we are trying to extract, it's a wolf 1346 is the standard star name. So format is 1D spec. Reference is nothing for now. Reference is nothing. Then interactive, yes. Find apertures, yes. Recenter, yes. Resize aperture, yes. Edit aperture, trace, yes. Fit trace points, yes. 
and extra extract sky and sigma s so uh, line is 1960 why i have taken this line number is that is where i find h alpha so i just took it you can leave it as indefinite also wherever you find a high signal and low sky you can take that line for example i can take the line number as 149 here or 2561 uh, that is the line number i can take the it should be not uh, like a sky it should not be contaminated by the skyline somewhere which it is very bright and not a cosmic ray hit location you can take that 2662 or some such thing Uh, yeah the uh, no 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 this is uh, when we said combine for the flats we try to we try to ask it to combine the cosmic ray rejected flats so the flats we are expecting cosmic ray rejection they are not here yet yeah yeah this dot dots are here yeah no just take some uh, 1960 this is this is where the h alpha falls i know so i am just taking that but uh, the location what you have to take is in between skylines where there are no skylines but where there is brightness in the continuum or in the emission line that location when i showed you the emission line that's the most brightest spot so you can choose that as your uh, line and this is for what you know to find out the aperture basically to find out where you have a enhancement to tell that to tell the program that this is where i have my spectrum extract within this column within from this column to this column so that is why it is asking for a selection of aperture it is asking for a line so um yeah so we come down then uh, we are not going to change most of the background parameters and all uh, we leave it at that aperture centering parameters also we'll leave it at that all the parameters we are go going to leave it but when it comes to background we are going to say um, median if you go to the background and press uh, put a question mark there it will say what are the options available okay you can either give a median or a fixed and here weights variance okay read noise 4.87 and gain is 1.22 so i say colon and go so are you with me till here if you press go then we'll have to do some procedures on the graphical window we are doing this interactively when i press go it will ask me a few questions just keep on pressing enter which means to take it you will take the default values and you have to get into the graphical window okay is everybody in the graphical window now are you are you there kushbu are you at the terminal window no should i wait for you yeah, okay let us wait for a minute bail you are there where are you you are in the apal task let me check let me give a minute we have only half an hour left
ओके खुशबू ओके No, 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 no. Forty-three, you have to do because forty-fourth is a lamp spectrum. Yeah. So there, you cannot get an aperture of this kind for lamp spectrum because lamp spectrum is across all the spatial uh, axis, right? Across all the spatial direction. So if you have to extract the apertures, you have to first extract it on the object, and use the same aperture for lamp extraction. Okay. So you go back to forty-three, and get this window. so work on 43 so you see this is the number of aperture we we have selected uh, aperture uh, only one aperture that is uh, it has asked number of apertures to be found automatically it is one it will select the highest intensity aperture uh, so though it has two objects uh, it selects the highest intensity one and um, it has selected the center of that that is fine for us now you have to come down and and see if you want to increase the uh, aperture width so when you come down to the left and press l so uh, the lower limit will increase you, and when you come down um, come to the right at the wing and press u you can select the aperture uh, width and yeah lower limit l means is lower limit yeah including the wings if you want to do that you can do that now you can see two more small uh, things over here okay those are background it is it is taking the those ranges for background estimation but that is not actually correct we want to go a little bit farther away for it to estimate the background so how we will do that is we will uh, we will these these small things here okay as i was saying okay you yeah, see this thing yeah those two are the background limits it is taken so we want to change that we want to give a background limit somewhere over here and somewhere over here so we will press the b key b is for background now the image has changed as you can see this background may be okay but we want to push it away the background uh, uh, where it has to take the background sampling regions we want to push it away so what we will do is we will say colon sample okay when you type colon sample space and say minus 25 to minus 15 that is 10 pixels on the left minus 25 colon minus 15 space and 15 to 25 on the plus 15 colon plus 25 on the right side so those are my background sampling regions okay so once i type that i'll press an enter and i'll say fit now you can see how it got shifted colon colon sample colon who could get the background regions i got the background region the plot is plot but colon if you press colon you will get some 
on the graphical window. Fit redraw will select the background regions. Okay. Kushbu done? Stuck somewhere? So I'm quitting from that uh, background sampling window. Yeah. So uh, you know how to select the aperture. Yeah. Now I want to change the background sampling. So I'll press B. I'll get this uh, background sampling window. So here I will say colon, not semicolon, it's colon. Sample, I'll write sample, space, and give the ranges. You want to give a 15 pixel range or a 10 pixel range? You can check. Huh? You cannot give the total range. The background region should be on the left and right side of that. Uh, so I have given minus 25 to minus 15 as the left range and 15 to 25 on the right side of the aperture. Huh? Then I will press an enter, fit, redraw, quit. So I get my new background regions. After sample, how you? You can see some flat ranges, no? I mean, on the right. The colon sample, space, minus twenty five to fifteen, minus fifteen, minus twenty five. No, minus twenty five colon minus fifteen. Okay, the same way. Space. That is for the left range. Space, fifteen colon. 25 on the right. Yeah. <clears throat> Sample space minus 25 to minus 15, 15 to 25. You could take 10 pixels or 5 pixels. That when you once start working, you will, you can uh, customize that. Okay. Then press enter. Then fit. Redraw, quit it from the background sampling window, quit again, then it will ask trace apertures, you say yes, fit trace positions, you say yes, fit curve, yes. So now you see it's not on 144th column itself. You can see, did you get this trace spectrum? You got it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Yeah, spectrum I got after that. This trace spectrum you got? Uh, no, no, no. Just for uh, the background. Okay, yeah. you got the background. So I got this background one up here. Yeah, so, so you uh, gave the sampling? No. So that, for that what I have to write? Colon. 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 Just colon. Okay. Don't present her, just call and you give them. So, on the just B, right? No, B will go to the background. Earlier I was writing it was not exempt, it was starting from A and B. It was not there. Okay, no, I have there. But delete is not working. It is a thing. It is not working. It is not working. 
Anything you want to write on the Okay, so this is okay. We don't want to do anything with that. The trace is pretty good. So we'll just quit it. Write uh, apertures into the database file. Yes. Extract spectrum within that aperture which means to say the aperture had a very finite width of 10 columns or something. Now it will extract along these columns and add it to improve the signal to noise. Then you have to extract it, yes. Review extracted spectra, yes. So just keep on pressing yes. So this is how the spectrum looks after Wolf 1346 star. Quit. It will again Yes, yes, yes. It's the spectrum. It is having the so after this, we have to convert the x-axis to the entire form by the speed of the So that is the speed. That calibration is there. Thank you. Oh, uh, very good question, please. Okay. Oh, it's not yet on the What do you Okay. Done. Got it. Got it. So you check how it looks on the I 
So for uh, lamp spectra, so for every object, we would have observed a calibration lamp. So FENE is our calibration lamp. And uh, in the images, uh, in the image list, you can see the file number 44 is a calibration lamp. So we will now extract uh, uh, the calibration lamp. It's not the same as uh, the um, object extraction because there is no aperture. We don't fit any aperture or anything. We ask it to take the same aperture as we have to fit for the object and just uh, give us the spectrum. So it is going to be uh, along a few columns only. We are not going to do any more aperture selection for the lamp spectrum. So for that, the APAL task will have a different uh, uh, a different set of parameters. So please write down for the APAL task. So we are now working on 44 file, which is a lamp spectrum. So I will write the output name as FENE of the object one. Okay. And here I have to give reference images. You can give any name. FENE is the lamp spectrum, uh, iron neon lines, and it is the lamp spectrum of the object. Okay. So that is one thing. And the, here we are, we are going to give the reference as the object image. Right. 43rd is the object. Right. We are going to ask it to take all the references, aperture information, 
background information. There is no background subtraction actually for FENE because there is no sky background. So FENE is spread over all the things. So we don't do background subtraction, but tracing and the aperture selection is all. Uh, we are asking it to take all the information from the object spectrum itself. So here we are going to run task uh, interactively, but we are not going to find any new apertures. So press that as no. No recentering will be done. No resizing of the apertures will be done. We are not going to edit any of the apertures. So everywhere you press no. We are not going to trace the apertures. We are not going to fit trace points, but we are going to. We want it to extract the spectrum. So we keep that as S. And there is no background uh, in the FENE lamp. So, so we are not going to extract any sky. So that will be no. So this is how you need to change the parameters for extracting the lamp spectrum. Okay. If you come down further. Background should be none here. We are not doing any background subtraction. And weights also not. Okay. You can keep the cleanness for last one also. I might have missed this point. Clean will detect and uh, remove all the uh, bad pixels and cosmic hits here. Okay. Then colon go. So write apertures to database, yes. And extract aperture, yes. Review the extracted uh, spectrum, yes. So you can see this is how the emission spectrum will look like, emission line spectrum. Got it? Got it? Kushbu got it? No? File got it? Okay, should I come there? Got it? Object in the reference, the final object report or object object image file that is forty three dot fit F D whatever the yeah, that file only. It's the image file. It's not the spectrum file. Okay, we'll quickly, we have 15 minutes, we'll run through now. So what you have from the, let us review the object spectrum. So S plot is what you can use as plot to plot the spectrum. S plot. S plot. Spectral plot. S plot object. Okay. This is how it looks, right? This is the extracted spectrum. And what you can see on the x-axis is pixels and on the y-axis is counts. So this we have to convert to wavelength and flux. So that we will try to quickly make. So, we have to uh, identify these lines. That is where the calibration lamps come. We have to identify these lines. Yeah, the name I gave OBJ1.0. Yeah, this is the, the object spectrum that we did after E5. Yes. Right? yes. This is the spectrum. Extractor oh, spectrum. Okay. So we did E for we did one two, one object and the other one is lamp. Lamp, yeah. So this is the object one. This is the object one, yeah. So it would have saved in a different name with a different suffixes. 
dot zero zero dot zero zero one something like that. The name is random actually. Yeah, yeah. You can rename it. Hmm. Ah, I see. So I need. We need to identify the uh, several lines in the lamp spectrum. Okay. So we know the pixel position. We know its wavelength. So then you will derive a dispersion correction or a dispersion solution, wavelength solution. This pixel corresponds to this, this wavelength, so you can derive uh, a DW by DP um, wavelength of dispersion. Why is this counts, counts, counts. You are getting the same shape. Almost not the same. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, but the count is very less. One seventy five was the. Uh, you may have to re-extract uh, using the pan. You may have to re-extract. Okay, E par identify. Okay, I'm going to identify the uh, lines now. This is an important step. Okay, I'm going to give the lamp spectrum name. F E N E object one something. Then um, in the tutorial uh, uh, material, I have given you F E N E dot that file. Okay, so uh, that should be the coordinate list from where it can uh, take the real wavelength ranges. It should be an emission lines so we are giving it as emission rest all the values are default so we can give a go coordinate is a coordinate list right is is fene dot dat is what is given to you in the data set file uh, in the give the total path here full path this is a uh, fe dot that file okay. path yeah total path of it is how you have written that you have written uh, F E N E is also there. You will need to use a mouse. Uh, how did you get the data? Um, the observatories uh, will have uh, the data so file. Yeah, actually, you can get this from uh, the IRAP itself. IRAP has for FE any different lines. What is the actual wavelength? I'll show you how that file, file looks like. So, FE any dot that looks something like this. You see, this is the actual wavelength. Okay, so we are going to uh, mark each pixel with the actual wavelengths of this. So this we are asking it to take the actual wavelengths from this particular file. Okay. And uh, we will have to try to match it with FENE dot JPEG. I have sent you this file. Okay. Try to match and say which uh, line belongs to which wavelength. So we have to do this. So you can expand. This line belongs to this wavelength, 58, 52, this particular line. You can expand. Press M to mark the line. 
and give the wavelength 5852 then uh, go colon go no no everything is default we are identifying the lines now so choose very um very prominent single lines okay so uh, the wavelength of this line is something like 64 62 this line here is similar to this line here Sixty-four, sixty-two. Okay. Let me come back. Okay. So this line M will mark the center of the line when you press an M key, and it will ask what is the wavelength of this. It is it it knows its x pixel values x and y pixel values so it's asking what is what is the uh, actual wavelength so fifty eight fifty two so I just uh, typed fifty eight fifty two and the actual wavelength it is taking from the fene dot that file okay so so that's how it can get. Press an M key. You expanded the spectrum, right? Shift X. You selected a line. To select a line, you press an M key. The center will be marked. And then type the wavelength. So it is 6402 over here. Fit. Go back. Yeah, yeah. So these wavelengths are marked here. This is from the uh, lab spectrum. So you know these wavelengths. Select very, uh, very single isolated lines, strong lines, and you try to map the wavelength with the pixel. Okay. So we can do some five to ten lines, and then. Uh, we can ask. We can uh, ask the uh, IRF to continue automatically. By uh, I will come to that. No, when I come here and press an M. So it will it will find a, it will uh, do the fitting and give me the center of the this line. So that is that is what it is marked over here. M. Um, fit five lines I mean choose five lines then I'll show you how to uh, select all the lines automatically fit all the lines So I, I selected only four lines. Maybe you can select one more, five lines. So once you are uh, identified all the lines, just press an F key. It will fit a polynomial for it. So you can see it has fit a, fit a spline. I would like to fit, uh, say, a legend polynomial. 
fit and i would like to give a higher order fit f f will take you to this window got it so let's just quit it once you quit you will see that the x axis is changed to wavelength which means it has already applied the correction okay now press yeah after what should be given the pc function change you colon f u l c func and space give the function legender or whatever function you want to fit you can fit your uh, your aim is to reduce the rms to uh, a two digit two decimals 160th of the resolution element we'll see how that calculations come rms should be 0 0.005 something like that it is line 3 i'm getting 0.037 0.00 yeah yeah so i'll now i quit from the fitting window you will see that the uh, x axis is changed to wavelength okay now while press an l key it will automatically fit all the lines based on the wavelength solution we already obtained l key pressing l Why is your order one? But it's fine, it's not when it's late in the room. Okay, your order is something like this. Then you can see it. And if it is after L, you again try to fit. No, you again try to fit. Delete D for delete some of the very off points. It should be, um, there is a calculation for that which we can discuss sometime later. But uh, 0 0.00 kind of RMS is good, 0 0.01, 0 0.005. 0 0.4 is too high. So you need to delete very off points. Okay. Well, after doing quit and then you located all the lines L L. Then again, fits. Remove any off points. Try to get an RMS of uh, something like 0 0.07, 0 0.01, 0 0.005. Those are good. 160th of a resolution element. So, you are getting fit. Okay, yes. yeah. So, we'll quit it. And, and if we are happy with the fit, we'll quit again. So, it will ask whether we have to write the features to the database. We'll say yes. And our wavelength calibration, uh, the lines are identified. Now we have to use HEDIT because we have to reference this to the object, object spectrum. We should say that, look, there is already wavelength solution given. 
in the lamp spectrum. So use that as the reference spectrum. So we are using HID task to, um, uh, to basically add this lamp spectrum as a reference spectrum for the object frame. So let me select the object frame. Keep our edge edit object frame. So my fields will be ref spec one. Okay, and this would be F E N E O B J one zero zero one dot bits. This is the file for which we have already identified the uh, lines and we have obtained the wavelength solution. Okay, so just add yes. So you want to check in the in header whether, whether it is added or not. So this last one is added in my in header. Okay. So that is the reference spectrum. Done. So we have finally we have to apply the dispersion what we got onto the object spectrum. We have just referenced the uh, lamp spectrum. Now we have to apply the dispersion to the object spectrum. So EPAR disk core is dispersion correction. Here uh, we give the object name. You can give a new name for the output, say W, which means wavelength calibrated. Then uh, it is asking where is the apertures F E N E dot dash the same uh, the same path you should give and rest all values are are default then we'll press go this is what it has done it has it has used the reference spectra F E N E and applied the same dispersion what it has got for F E N E to our object spectrum, which is wavelength calibrated now, right? So what is the wavelength range? It is starting from 9240 to uh, 5, 5230 angstroms. And the wavelength or the dispersion correction is now minus 1.27. So which means this the spectrum is, is um, yeah, it, yeah, it, it's all done, yeah. So you can check the wavelength calibrated spectrum. Now you see it is the x-axis is converted to the wavelength. So that is the wavelength uh, steps. Now we have the y-axis to get converted into flux. So we have to use the standard star. So I'm just going fast. Because you have uh, the manual, you can just uh, look at the steps and in the manual, you can use the manual to, yeah, you can use the manual and uh, continue the steps. So we have three steps under flux calibration. One is standard to map the counts to the fluxes or the magnitudes of the standard star. We know what is the flux at each wavelength of the standard star. So we are trying to map. So counts and uh, wavelength counts at the magnitude or the flux of the wave, the standard star. So the, it is, it is it, our aim is to now convert the y-axis from counts to fluxes. So now it will for each wavelength. So what is the count? Be, right? yeah, that we did with the disk correction. No, that doesn't apply to all the. Components. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, each file you should each do. Oh. So we will do the EPA standard. Time is over. People are waiting. That's okay. That's okay. So uh, since there is lack of time, so we will, uh, you try to do the flux calibration using the manual. And uh, we, yeah, if you have any doubts, please contact me back. So I'll just leave you with, um, yeah, I'll just leave you with my uh, email address. So thanks. We have to end here. We couldn't complete.
but they, they are going to finish it by themselves and come back to you and show you the results, right? Yeah, I yeah. hope so. Yes. Good then. It's happening tomorrow. Tomorrow there is another. Oh, there's another. There's another time. Good then. <laughs> anyway, it was so. Testing. Yeah, it was yeah. So inside, uh, we, yeah, inside the spec folder, you have low resolution manual. You can go through the manual and um, get the data done. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for your patience, and we'll end here. Long live. India and France friendship.